Have you ever heard about marathon runners who have hit the wall? While the wall I'm talking about is a metaphorical one, the effects of this phenomena are indeed very real. Hitting the wall means that your body has run out of energy and can no longer continue the physical activity as running. As a person who's run a marathon myself, I know how important it is for marathon runners to fuel their bodies during the marathon to prevent the dreaded wall disaster. That's right, runners need to actually work on consuming calories during those adventurous 26.2 miles. I'm going to share with you uh, some details of how the energy is used in, body, in the body and what type of fuel runners can use to keep going so you can avoid hitting that wall. As explained in the book, Running for Fitness, your body gets its energy from carbohydrates. When you consume carbohydrates, they're broken down into glucose, which is then uh, floats around in your, your bloodstream and provides you with uh, instant energy, immediate energy. Excess glucose then gets stored in your body as glycogen. It's stored in your liver and in your muscles. So your body prefers uh, glucose as its energy source. It's its easiest form of energy. So when you start a physical activity like running your marathon, your body is going to consume all of the glucose that's readily available in your bloodstream, also known as your blood sugar level, the glucose in your blood, um, but that's quickly going to get depleted. So after the immediate glucose is gone, your body needs to turn to those stores of energy, that glycogen that I was talking about, to uh, turn that back into glucose and shuttle that glucose through the bloodstream to your muscles that desperately need some energy. So in your liver and in your muscles, you've got quite a bit of glycogen stored, so that can get you by for a little while, but the trick of it is, is that supply is a finite supply. So you are going to run out of it. When you run out of glycogen, you're going to run out of glucose. When you run out of glucose, you run out of energy. And when you run out of energy, you hit the wall. Running becomes nearly impossible. You get lightheaded. You get woozy. And a lot of people just aren't able to recover from that. So what do you do about this? How do you prevent yourself from running out of energy? How do you keep yourself supplied with the glucose that you need to finish your race? Well, you need to consume fuel, uh, get more glucose, consume more carbohydrates so your body can turn that into glucose. Pamela Bead at Runner, Runner's World magazine uh, advises that most experts suggest that we uh, runners consume 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates for every hour they're running. So you just figure out however many hours you think it's going to take you to run a marathon and you ration yourself accordingly. You want to consume 30 to 60 grams of carbs. So how do you do that? What, what, what can you be eating while you're, you're running this race? Well, there is a whole industry that's set up to provide runners with nutrition on the go. Uh, these little packets here are very common. They might be called goos or gels or shot blocks. And they're basically just a little package here with a thick syrupy substance in here that has a lot of carbs in it, some sugars in there. Um, so you rip off this little tab as you're running, you know, squirt it in your mouth, drink some water with it. And this is going to deliver, you know, about 30 grams of carbs per packet, depending on your, your particular brand in one shot. Now the nice thing about this is that it's pretty small. A lot of running clothes um, these days have little pockets that you can fit these into. You can even just pin them on your shirt as you're running. And these days most marathons actually will hand these out at various points on the course. So this is a very common uh, type of fuel. But some people just don't like the consistency of it, they don't like to uh, eat such a manufactured and processed uh, item here. They prefer to eat whole foods as it were. So if you're one of those folks, then you might want to consider eating some bananas. Bananas would be great, a great source of carbs and sugar in there. Uh, you might want to eat some dried fruit, some fig newtons. You can even take along some gummy candy with you like jelly beans. There's really a lot of simple sugars and jelly beans that would break down into glucose really fast. Um, the problem with the, some of those options are they become challenging to port around. You imagine running a marathon with a bunch of bananas strapped to you somewhere so you can eat them periodically. <clears throat> and you'll see the problems I'm suggesting there. Um, some folks don't like to eat anything at all while they're running. It kind of 
plays with their digestive system. So for those folks, you might want to drink your carbohydrates. So uh, you might want to consider a sports drink like a Gatorade that has a nice mixture of carbs, uh, including sugars in there, to help get you to that 30 to 60 gram per hour target. Um, so in these last few minutes here, you've listened to me explain the importance of fueling during your marathon, and I've given you some specific suggestions uh, for how you might accomplish that. And I really encourage you all to uh, experiment with these suggestions. Everybody's unique. Everybody's digestive system is unique. So experiment with those in a long run before you attempt them during a race. And instead of being an insurmountable obstacle, hopefully that infamous wall becomes just another hurdle that you clear on your way to the finish line.